In this video, we're going to be looking at this problem, satisfiability of equality equations. We're given an array of strings called equations that represent relationships between variables. Each string is length 4 and is of one of two forms. It's either xi equals equals yi or xi not equals yi. So here xi and yi are lowercase letters that represent one letter variable names. We want to return true if integers can be assigned to satisfy all of the given equations and false otherwise. Let's take a look at the examples. So in the first example, we have a equals b and b not equals a. So we're going to return false here, as both of these equations cannot be satisfied at the same time or you have a contradiction. In the second example, we have b equals a and a equals b. So we return true here, as these equations can indeed be satisfied at the same time. An example is a equals 1 and b equals 1. Right off the bat, it might not be too clear where we want to start. Maybe we can keep track of the variables in a hash map or maybe using a graph where the variables are the nodes and the equality relationships are the edges. But regardless, let's try to simplify this problem down a little bit. Let's look at an example of a list of equations, but only with equality. So let's do this one. a equals b, b equals a, b equals c, c equals d, E equals F and E equals G. So a natural way of how we might want to tackle this is just simply grouping the ones that are equal to each other. So we have A equals B, so let's a add A and B to the same group. With B equals A, well we can skip this since B and A are already in the same group. With B equals C, let's add C to this group. With C equals D, let's add D to this group. With E equals F, well now let's create a new group and add E and F to it. With E equals G, let's add G to this group. Okay, looks good so far. Now what would happen if there was an equation like B equals F in this mix as well? Well this would mean that B and all the other variables in group 1 equals F and all the other variables in group 2. So we should merge these two groups. Now we're going to have one group that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now let's start introducing inequality equations. So what if we had something like a does not equal f? Well, if a does not equal f, a and f should not be in the same group. However, a and f are in the same group, so we can return false here. And we can just repeat this for every other inequality equation. If we encounter an, any inequality equation where both variables are in the same group, we can return false immediately. Otherwise, if none of them fail this test, then all these equations can be satisfied and therefore we can return true. Let's translate this into pseudocode. So groups, let's say that it's going to be a list of hash sets. This is how we're going to represent the groups as we just mentioned. Now for each equality equation with variables A and B, what well, we're going to find A's group if it exists, and then otherwise create a new group. We're also going to find B's group if it exists, otherwise create a new group. And then we're going to merge groups X and Y together. Now for every inequality equation with variables A and B, well, we're going to find A's group and we're gonna find B's group. If these are the same group, we're gonna return false here since this will represent a contradiction. Otherwise, we will return true. Great, this is a good start, but let's think about what the time complexity of this would be. Well, in the first for loop, we iterate through n equations, but in the worst case, we need to merge groups on every iteration. So for merging groups x and y, let's say that the way it works naively is that we remove x and y from groups, which is on, then union the two hash sets x and y together, which is on, and then adding it back to groups. So we're getting O n squared overall in the first for loop. And then in the second for loop, we iterate through n equations. Finding A's group is O n, finding B's group is O n. So overall we're getting O n squared as well for the second for loop. So overall for our algorithm, we're getting O n squared. And this is uh, the result from a naive way of representing the groups as a list of hash sets. Now the question is, can we do better? And the answer is yes because we have been exactly describing the use case of a union find data structure. So recall that a union find is used to keep track of elements in disjoint sets, and it has operations union of A and B, 
which will union the two sets that A and B belong to, and find A, which will return the set that A belongs to. So at a high level, what we really want to do is first go through all the equality equations, call union on all of the variables, then we go through all the inequality equations, and if we have A does not equal B, then we just need to check that find A does not equal to find B. Let's translate this into pseudocode. So first we want to replace this with a union find. We're going to initialize a union find. Now instead of doing all this, we're going to union A and B. And inst instead of doing this, we're going to find A and find B. So we're not going to go into the specifics of union find. That will be covered in a different video on data structure fundamentals. So the time complexity of the union operation, it's technically O uh, log iterative log N. So don't worry about this for practical purposes and for an input size as small as the ones given in the problem, it's basically O1. So same thing with the find operation, it's also O1. This means that in the for loop, it's ON. The second loop is ON. So overall, the time complexity is ON. For space, well, there are only at most 26 different variable names. So when we initialize union find, it's going to internally hold an array of size 26. So this is a constant, so the space is O1. So obviously that's true just for this exact problem's constraints, but if the variable name could be any arbitrary string, the space would really be OM, where M is the number of variable names. So just one thing to keep in mind during an actual interview. So let's implement this in Java. First off, we're going to implement the union find data structure. Again, we're not going to get into the explanation of how this works into detail. That'll be covered in a separate video. So union find is typically implemented like this. Now let's initialize a union find of size 26. We're going to iterate through all of the equality equations. Then we're going to split that string by the two equal signs. So we do this to convert the variable name, which is a lowercase alphabetical character to an integer where starting from lowercase a is zero. And then we're going to union A and B. Then we're going to iterate through all of the inequality equations. And instead of union here, we're, well, we're going to check if find A equals find B, then we return false. And then otherwise we return true. All right, let's run this. And you'll see that it passes. And that's how you solve this problem, satisfiability of equality equations.